Hey guys, I just love this project so much and I can't wait to share it with you. We are continuing from my last video where I showed you how to cut and emboss copper using a die cut machine. And I said with the next video, we would make a jewelry component. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to use this Luna Moth that I cut out and embossed with my cuddle bug machine. And we are going to first move over to the soldering station and I'm going to assemble my tools. I'm using lead free solder, a pair of pliers that I only use for soldering. And I have an old cup with a disposable brush and I'm gonna use some liquid flux. You can't solder without flux. That's what makes the solder adhere to your metal. I'm going to put my copper piece into the flux and use my brush to coat it up but you can just hold it with your pliers and apply the flux with a brush if you like. Now, you always wanna wear safety glasses and a mask when you're going to solder or work with chemicals and work in a well-ventilated area. So I've heated up my soldering iron, getting it nice and hot. I have my copper piece coated with flux and I'm ready to solder. I'm gonna hold the piece with my pliers because it will get hot. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of solder with the tip of my soldering iron and I have to hold it against the copper for a moment because the copper is cold when you start out and it's gonna warm up very quickly with that soldering iron and that solder will flow. I'm going to spread the solder all over the top of my Luna Moth. A little bit goes a long way and I'm just making a thin coating. I will turn it and grab the other side so I can, you know, make sure I cover all areas and then I'm going to go around the edges and just make sure that I coat all the places that are copper with the silver and I'm using, like I said, lead free solder which is a mix of silver and tin. I'm going to flip it over and we are going to do the same thing to the reverse side and you can see that solder just bubbling on there when I hold the hot soldering tip against it. I'm gonna add a little bit more flux because it evaporates when you're working and it evaporates from the heat of the soldering iron, it kinda makes it boil away. And you can see when I brush that on how that brightens up that copper right away. So the flux basically takes all the oxidation off of the copper and allows the solder to adhere. Continuing, I'll pick up little pieces of solder and as I did on the front, I'm just gonna spread it on the back and make a nice thin coat. And what we're doing is we are making our Luna Moth a little bit thicker and sturdier. And once we're finished with all the soldering, it's just gonna be like a whole different piece of metal. It's gonna be really cool. So here I am finishing up the back. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more solder and I'm going to pull it on as you see. I put a little drop down and then I tap like the tip of my soldering iron onto the solder so that it spreads out. You may need to like work on that a little bit when you're doing it. Um, you want a nice smooth layer and all I'm doing is making it just a little bit thicker. I'm giving it a little bit more weight, a little bit more density, and it just gives it like a more of a heavier feel. And I'm gonna do that on the back, and then I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm going to do it on the front. I'll apply more flux, and I'm also very careful not to hold the tip of my soldering iron against it for too long. As you can see, I work quite quickly. I'll do one small area and then I'll move to another area. I'm just putting another coating on, making it a little bit thicker, but I don't wanna lose the design, that nice embossed design. So that's why I'm trying to make it like a real level kind of layer so that I don't have like a lump anywhere in the solder. And then once I'm finished, I'm gonna take a little bit more solder and I'm just gonna add some decorative droplets. And that is just to add some interest and some dimension. And where I add it on one side, I'll add it on the other side, so it's symmetrical. And 
and I'll keep going over those drops until they're nice and smooth. Usually just a little bit of solder works and then, you know, add a little bit more, a little bit at a time. And then build it up and make it nice and smooth and round using a lot of flux as you go, as I always say. You need a lot of flux. Once I'm happy with it, I forgot that I knocked the head off accidentally when I was first cutting it out of the copper. So I just take a little bit of solder and I make a little head for the Luna Moth and now it's finished and I can wash it off and then move to the workbench where we are going to drill some holes. Now if you have a hole punch you can use that. I use just a regular electric drill and I am drilling two small holes, one at the top of each wing, so I can put a chain through, a jump ring to attach a chain and then I decided to drill two more holes below that so I can hang some beads or some chain from the bottom of the wings. I thought that was kind of cool. So now we are ready to move over to our patina. I have an old plate and a disposable brush that I only use for patina and I'm going to pour a little bit on the plate and we are going to give it a black finish. Now I'll add my Luna Moth to the pool of patina and instantly you will see the silver start to turn black. I'll use the brush to coat the entire piece of metal and once again I wear safety glasses and I work in a well ventilated area and I also have some paper towels close, on, close by <laughs> right on hand you know in case of any splashes or any mess. You want to really rub the patina into the metal piece so I'm going to brush over it you know not like very hard but as you can see I'm rubbing it in a little bit here and there and leaving it soak on there for a minute or two let it get nice and black then I'm going to use my brush to lift it and hold it with a paper towel and blot it off. I'm going to blot it with the paper towel and then I'm going to set it aside on another paper towel and let it completely dry for about five or ten minutes while I clean up my mess. I'm going to wipe up the plate and all the used patina with a paper towel and dispose of that. And then, you know, you want to wash that plate and brush in some warm soapy water, rinse it, and you won't use that for food. That is only for patina. Now I have my Luna Moth and we're going to go over to the sink and we're going to scrub it up with a little bit of dish detergent on a fingernail brush. And what I'm doing is I'm just rinsing away that extra patina and some of that metal and that finish is going to come off with that. I should still have a nice black coating of patina because I let it set on there pretty well. And then I'm going to grab my Scotch Bright pad right away and I'm going to buff the metal because I want to remove a lot of the black now and let that silver peek through because I'm going for a vintage silver or an antique silver finish. We want it to look old and very cool. <laughs> and I'll rub it a little bit and then I put it under the running water so that I can rinse off that debris and see where I'm at. And if you don't have a scotch Bright pad, you can use fine steel wool and dry off your project. And now it's ready to be turned into a beautiful piece of jewelry. And I will show you how I do that in my next video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I can't wait to show you what we're going to do next, so be sure you check back. I release a new video every Friday and sometimes in between. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.